Knowing how to figure out when we have leap years is crucial if you want to use the day of the week algorithm that I have linked to at the end of this video. But a bigger question is, why do we even have leap years? Well, it turns out that the question revolves around, no pun intended, the time it takes for the Earth to orbit the Sun. Is that exactly 365 days? Turns out, no. Uh, it's a little bit more. And it's very, very close to 365 and a quarter days. Now, if we just left the date, the length of the year, 365 days, we would slowly kind of get out of sync with our seasons. When we would refer to it as summer, it would actually be winter. And this is exactly what happened in the late Roman Republic. And it was Julius Caesar who, with the help of some mathematicians from Alexandria, uh, determined the way to fix this would be to add one day every four because the length of a year is pretty much 365 and a quarter days. Now this wasn't actually uh, implemented until the reign of Augustus in AD 8. So for more than 2,000 years we have been adding one uh, day every four. The problem is we're very, very close to 365 and a quarter days, but not quite exactly. That is, turns out to be about 11 minutes too long. And 11 minutes doesn't sound like much, but over the course of 400 years, that would result in three extra days. So how do you accommodate that? So here's how to determine if it's a leap year. Basically, it's every four years. So if the year is divisible by four, like 1980 or 2004, then it's a leap year. And the extra day is added at the end of February. So February 29th only comes around once every four years. But to accommodate this extra three days over the course of 400 years, we decided that uh, every hundredth year uh, is not going to be a leap year. So 1800, 1900, etc. These are not leap years. But it's okay if the year is divisible by 400. So 1600, 2000, 2400, these are leap years. So in this way, we accommodate the extra three days. And so now you know how to determine if it's a leap year.